Okay, so we've been talking about velocity fields for a while now. Uh, let's try to explore these fields a little bit more. So let's let's just assume. Let's assume. Oh, oh you can't see that marker's not writing. Let's assume the velocity at a certain time at a certain position is known is known we know we know the velocity field okay now there's two questions we can ask the first one is how do we find the motion of an individual particle within that velocity field and the second is how do we find the acceleration of that particle in the velocity field now you know from dynamics or physics that if you were to um, integrate a velocity if you were to integrate a velocity if you integrated a velocity you would get a position you would get the position function and of course that position function would be equal to uh, the x-coordinate of that particle plus the y plus the z, right? Now, you integrate the velocity, you get a position, of course, plus c, but we'll just ignore that for now. Now, if you derived if you derive this velocity, you would get acceleration. It's just simple dynamics. I do hope you guys have taken dynamics before fluids. But anyway, we know we know that the velocity at a certain time or time-dependent velocity is equal to v of time of an x-coordinate of a y coordinate and of a z coordinate. All right, that's just our standard definition of a velocity field. Now we just said that we can integrate velocity to find position. So in order to find velocity from a position function, we can derive each of these terms. We can derive the x term, we can derive the y term, and we can derive the z term to give us our velocity field. So, if that is true, we can say our velocity is equal to dxp dt i plus dyp dt j plus uh, dzp dt k, right? We drive x, we get the x component of the velocity, and the same for all the other components. And you know that all this is going to be equal to Vx, Vy, Vz. And of course, each one of these are dependent on time, the x position, the y position of each particle, and the z position, the z coordinate. And it's the same for, for the uh, velocity in the in the y direction and in the z direction. So if we if we defined this to be the velocity field and this to be the velocity field, could we agree that the x component of of this is equal to the x component of this? They're both velocity fields. Well, yeah, we can say dxp dt is equal to v of x and dy p dt is equal to v of y and so forth. Now I'm going to do a quick example here. Um, actually we can, we can use the other page. So a very very quick example uh, just so you can see how the positions and the velocities uh, relate. So if we had, let's see if you can see that, if we had the velocity is equal to xi minus yj 
and we said dx dt is equal to uh, the x component or the i component of this velocity field. That's equal to vx. And what's vx? It's just the i term. It's, it's x. Now, dx dt is equal to x. Okay? And then, if we were to use separation of variables, we would get dx over x is equal to dt, right? And if we integrated both sides, on the left side here would be from a certain initial x position to x of t, a position at a certain time, and on the right side here we, we can just do 0 to t, we would get ln of x from x naught to x of t and that would and the right side if you integrated that we could um, we'll get just t now here we can we can uh, do ln of x minus ln of x naught and from algebra you know this is equal to um, ln of x over x naught, and that's still equal to t. Now, if we exponentiated both sides, if we eed both sides, we would get x over x naught is equal to uh, e to the t. And so finally, our x here, which is dependent on time, our x here would be equal to x naught times e to the t. Okay? And you could do that, again, you can do all of this for y, for the y components of the velocity, and you would get y of t, for this example, of course, y of t would be equal to y naught e to the, actually, negative t here, and z of t uh, would actually be a constant. Why? Because here, technically, v of z is equal to 0. And if you integrated 0, you would get a constant. Simple.